of these forty days we celebrate with songs of praise for Christ by whom all things were made himself has fasted and has prayed O Father, Son, and Spirit blessed to you be every prayer Hello, my friends, and welcome to our little church. And let us begin our prayer now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, we gather on this fifth Sunday of Lent. Our readings speak to us about Jesus and the covenant, the agreement between you and me and the Lord. And how important it is for us to understand that have we learned anything during this Lenten journey, especially about the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. My dear friends, all of us find that in the covenants of our lives. So how important it is for us to truly understand what it means to be about the Lord's passion, his death, and his resurrection. So let us call to mind our failings now and ask God's pardon. <clears throat> I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in the same charity with which, out of love for your wor of the world, your Son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I had made with their fathers the day I took them out of the land to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord.
Create a clean heart, a clean heart in me, O God. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. Create a clean heart, a clean heart in me, O God. A clean heart create for me, O God and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Create a clean heart, a clean heart in me. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Lord, cleanse my heart and my lips that I may worthily proclaim your gospel. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Whoever serves me must follow me, says the Lord. And where I am, there also will my servant be. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour is come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for life eternal. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. 
The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from the heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard this and said it was thunder. While others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. And now it is the time of judgment on this world. Now is the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. And my friends, this is the gospel of the Lord. In our first reading from the prophet Jeremiah, he talks about the new covenant. And this is what he says about the new covenant. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. These words, my friends, are very important to us as we finish up our journey through this Lent. And I wonder if it's not time for each one of us to take a moment and ask this question. Have I learned anything new in faith in these last weeks of journeying with the Lord? And I say that to you in a kind way, because so often what happens to us in faith is not the Big Bang Theory but little things that happen as we walk along through life and the little things that happen are what awakens in us a deeper understanding of the faith. What does it mean to have a covenant written on one's heart? Each one of us, the day of our baptism, begin this covenant with the Lord and how important it is for us to understand that we're walking with the Lord. Being baptized in his name, how important it is for us to understand that journey. And there are three key issues about that journey. We see it and we'll see it again and again in these next two weeks. The words related to the life of Jesus Christ, his passion, his death, his resurrection. And I really believe that I've found in my life the reality of passion, death, and resurrection time and time again. Because our words are filled with expectation. We expect good things to happen. And sometimes we get so caught up in the goodness that we don't understand that truly as followers of the Lord, we must also experience death and resurrection. How many people during this time of the pandemic have faced the issue of illness, wondering if there would be a tomorrow, wondering how long it would take to get rid of this virus. And if you looked at it in the, in the passion, death, and, uh, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you've seen it again and again in many different ways. How about the people that have lost their businesses or lost their jobs? And as we start to come out of the pandemic, need to look at it in a deeper way, a spiritual way, as they try to reestablish themselves. What was the passion? What was the death? And now is this resurrection? My friends, there's something that needs to be said in American society, and it has to be done in the words that Jesus Christ expresses to us during this Lenten time. I was thinking the other night of how would I share with you the story of the covenant and the story of the grain of wheat. Let me share it with you in this way. Before the pandemic took place, I was invited one night to a couple I had married. 
They have a very bright young son, six, seven years old. And as we were finishing dinner, he asked that if he could go to his room, for he was building something with his Legos. And off he went. And as I sat there and spoke with his mother and father, all of a sudden there was a big bang. He had gotten angry. He has tossed what he was building across the room. And of course, the Legos just spread throughout the room. They brought him out back to where we were seated. And he said, I don't know what happened to me. I just became so angry because it wasn't working the way I wanted it to work. I think there's something that we can learn from this little guy. It was something that he wasn't expecting, something that really led him to be angry, something that had him have to work it out. And when he worked it out, it was in an angry fashion. I wonder if we couldn't teach him about the passion, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The passion of Christ is what he was in his heart as he wanted to build. The death was when he realized he wasn't doing it the right way. And the resurrection was his mother going into the room and giving him a hug and saying, we'll do better. If we all understood that, would our lives be different? If we all understood that, would we allow the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to be our guide in everyday life? In those moments that have caused us great pain, great hardship, sometimes loneliness, and sometimes being overwhelmed. If we walk with Jesus Christ and we understand these words from Scripture this weekend, we can use an image that I believe is so important in my life and maybe in yours. The Gospel reading says, Unless the grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. My dear friends, Jesus Christ went through the passion, death, and resurrection for you and for me. We do the same in our daily lives, in the many difficulties that we face, the many challenges that are there. Take the words of John's Gospel today. And don't be shaken. When the, that moment comes of challenge, remember that you're part of the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And always at the end of the tunnel, there's a bright light because you understand exactly what Jesus went through and how he's going to hold your hand as you go through any difficulty, any challenge in life. Take these words to heart. And on this day, may the Lord give you his peace. With one heart and one voice, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear friends, we now take a moment to place before the Lord the needs of our heart, and we pray with great hope. For the church throughout the world, that it may see itself as a grain of wheat called upon to produce much fruit. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elected government officials, that they may serve the people with honesty, justice, and equality for all. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those dedicated to faith formation, and for those with whom they share the treasures of Christ, for this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who our masses are uh, remembering this weekend, for all our parishioners at this video mass, and also for Michelle Torek and Eleanor Edwards. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for all that the Lord has given us, may we show our gratitude by sharing with others through our generous gift to the 2021 Annual Catholic Appeal. For this, we pray to the Lord. For those suffering from any illness, that they may be touched by the healing power of God. For this, we pray to the Lord. And for those who have died, especially Julia Jacobs, Manuel Lindade, George Ortiz, and Linda Rossetti, that like the grain of wheat, that they may experience the fruit of eternal life. For this, we pray to the Lord. And for all your personal needs now, which you mention in the silence of your hearts. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer, answer it if it is your will, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. I prepare the altar now with these gifts of bread and wine, I ask you to make your offering to the Lord. It may be some need that you have within your heart. Maybe it's a gratitude you have for something good that has happened. Take time and make your offering to the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness will receive the bread of life. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. And Still humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the hosts of angels adore your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Duval, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with all the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the love of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And can we take a moment now to offer those around us in some way a safe sign of peace. Peace be with you, folks. Christ, Son of the living God, who with the Father and work of the Holy Spirit through death gave life to the world. Free me with this most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me most faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Happier we're called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only enter into my roof and my soul will be healed. Christ bring you to everlasting My dear friends, I ask you now to make your spiritual communion with the Lord. Invite prayerfully into your hearts and your mind and your soul the body of Christ. Make that generous connection with the Lord. Allow him to be an ever-growing part of your life.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have a communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, number one is that uh, uh, next week is Palm Sunday. Uh, information regarding palms and how you can pick up palms are in the bulletin this weekend. Please, if you haven't come to Mass, please take a, a ride and stop by the parish garage. There's a box there with the bulletins. Please take a bulletin because it has an up-to-date schedule in it. And I hope that you will join us in uh, at Mass or in spirit next weekend as we begin our Holy Week with Palm Sunday. Second of all, I'd like to thank those that have made their donation to the annual Catholic Appeal. That is going along very well. Uh, one of the parts of the diocese uh, that is funded by the annual Catholic Appeal is, of course, is the seminarians. And we had a meeting this week with the bishop, and he was very happy to share with us the number of young people that he has within our seminary program. And uh, he was very, very happy about that, and I was glad to see a smile on his face. Uh, so please, thank you for your generosity for not just supporting our seminarians, but the many ministries of the diocese. Um, and finally, let us prepare well for uh, the coming of Easter. Uh, please make sure that you uh, pick up the bulletin and make your reservations as is requested within the announcement about our times for masses and services from Palm Sunday, Holy Week, and Easter. Have a blessed day. And may the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My dear friends, our Mass has ended. Let us go in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Now let us say our St. Michael prayer. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Say.